Okay, so now we're kicking off with our second lightning talk, which is Simon Murray is going to be talking about hiring an offshore developer for your startup. Over to you. Hi guys, how are you going? Um, so this is a five minute version of probably an hour long conversation. Um, I own a, an audio production company working with record labels, TV, um, TV shows, and also emerging talent. And I'm the founder and co-founder of two tech startups. One is a web app for production management in the audio industry. The other is an online dating site um, launching later this year also. Um, I have decided to self-fund this uh, and uh, co-fund the dating site with my partner. Um, so what I want to do is share my experience and process with outsourcing development overseas. Show of hands, anyone considering this, doing this? Yeah? Okay, cool. Hopefully I can, yeah, give you some useful information and come and chat with me afterwards if I don't get it all out in the five minutes. Um, the information on these slides will be available for download. I think Scott might send them out. So. Um, Left button. Is that? <laughs> Try now. Hooray. Um, so first thing I think is very useful to do is learn about the technology. So not learn how to code the whole thing yourself, but perhaps uh, what I did was, yeah. are we going back? Oh, oh, for goodness sakes, how embarrassing. <laughs> Could you just put on the second slide, please, Ryan? <laughs> I'll see if I can out, yeah, thank you. Outsourcing presentations. Um, so I decided to take on board the responsibility for learning a little, about, little bit about the technology and the code so that when I was um, choosing the technology to build uh, in, be it Ruby or PHP or using Amazon Web Servers or you know, something like that, I had a bit of a better understanding. I could communicate better with the developers. Um, there's some links at the end of the show you places you can learn uh, simple stuff online. Um, you could also attend a short course if you prefer assisted um, learning uh, and also keep up to date with the best practice in technology blogs. Uh, you know, an example, when responsive websites came out, there were a lot of people that didn't get on board for a year later and they wasted a lot of money because they had to redesign their sites. Slide number three. <laughs> um, so where to find them? Finding developers is really easy. Finding great developers can be really challenging. Um, I think referral from colleagues is the best place, um, but if, if, uh, if you don't know anyone that has experience with a developer or they don't have a developer that they're willing to share because they're using them, um, you can look at sites like People Per Hour, Elance, and Odesk. Uh, a lot of developers on there. Next slide. Oh, go team. Okay, so um, how to choose them. Uh, I think pre prepare a very good brief uh, about the project, um, list uh, the required technologies. So this might be responsive design, HTML5, Ruby on Rails. Um, then search for developers with those matching skills and create a short list and then contact them with a brief. After they get back to you, what I've done in the past is select a handful of those applicants and then I've tested them on smaller projects. Uh, for example, I get a developer to build a custom WordPress plugin for me that I may not ever use, but it gives me the experience of actually working with them, their communication, um, how they respond to deadlines, etc. cetera. You know, maybe budget $1,000 to test out two to five developers and save tens of thousands of dollars by being able to outsource the work. Um, next. Um, so budgeting, I think you have to be realistic with the budget, so talk with people that have done this sort of thing before, because um, quite often you might post a budget of $10,000 to, to uh, complete a project and you'll get developers saying I can do it for two, I can do it for six, I can do it for 20. So get some advice on that. I had an experience where uh, for my audio production uh, web app, I put the brief out for six to eight uh, thousand US dollars and I'd engaged one particular company we were going forward spent eight weeks back and forth back and forth pre preparing the briefs the night before it was supposed to start I said all right let's lock in the final budget I was expecting maybe to creep up to 12,000 35,000 US dollars wasted a lot of my time and uh, it was an unpleasant experience so you know hopefully you can avoid that that trap uh, next slide um, what I've found is you have to be very detailed in a brief. Um, it's, it's infrequent that, that a developer, um, if a, an offshore developer, is going to be very intuitive. What I've found is more likely is it's going to be following the brief to the T 
And in scenarios where, some, where one function can be formed in many different ways, for example, uploading a file to an S3 bucket on Amazon, there are many different ways you can do it. They will pick the fastest and easiest method, not necessarily the most secure or best for the performance of your product. Um, so what I do is I discuss this stuff with a local dev and I actually pay them to maybe even set up the initial architecture and then you can outsource the kind of legwork stuff with a bit more confidence. Um, next. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think this is really important, code quality and security. Can't recommend it enough, hire a local developer to look over the code. They're gonna be able to speak the language, they'll be able to look at the code to make sure best practices are being adhered to. They'll be able to tell you if something's taking longer than it should, um, so I highly recommend that. Um, also, you wanna keep a local backup of all of the code that they're working on in case they disappear off the face of the planet. This can happen, um, so very important. And next. Um, this is a little bit of a, uh, an odd one that I don't think a lot of people do. Um, figure out a way to keep a developer happy. Um, the, these developers, well certainly the ones I've worked with, are getting paid a lot less than we would pay a local developer. And, and they, they, for me, have made things possible that I just could not have achieved. And I feel very fortunate for that. So, so what I do, I discuss with them, what are your goals? What are you wanting to achieve in life? I've done things like, um, buy them an iPad, give them extra paid uh, week's leave. Um, one developer I paid to, I flew them out to Australia, it cost me a couple of grand, but what's that in the scheme of saving tens of thousands of dollars? Um, so you can do these little things, and you know, if they're doing great jobs, be generous. Uh, so I can't recommend that enough. Um, I think we're nearly at the end. So uh, yeah, other considerations, the time difference, late nights, early mornings, you, it, it can really affect, affect your uh, work-life balance. Um, things like scheduled blackouts in India often power two hours at a time and the day, the time frame changes week to week, so you've got to be aware of things like that. Cultural differences. Uh, for me, I was hearing my developers say, I've got concerns about this thing and I hear concerns and think my life is ruined. What they meant was, I have some questions. So clarification is really important. Um, also things like it's perfectly normal in India to leave work unannounced to go and visit your auntie who's just had a baby. So things like that can take you by surprise. So it's important to communicate and understand those cultural differences. Another really important thing, the Australian dollar. If your project is spanning months, this could make or break your project. So where possible, negotiate in Aussie dollars or look at, um, you know, with your bank maybe getting uh, fixed, fixed rates and there are certainly um, foreign exchange sort of uh, packages you can get with your bank that can also help you lock things in. So look into that as well. And yeah, so in summary, learn about the technology, learn about the cultural differences, test them out on smaller projects, prepare good briefs, um, be realistic about costs, hire a senior dev or local de a developer to review their work, secure and back up the code, and at the bottom, uh, keep them happy. So the next slide, um, there's just a, a bunch of um, resources so, which will be available to you. Thanks for your time and chat with me later.